Hi everyone and thanks for joining me. It's time for another placemat pouch. If you've been following along we have nine other versions of placemat projects and this is going to be version number 10 and I'm calling this one the tote. I think this is a really great idea. I'm mixing the placemat with some faux leather. So again we don't have to worry about finished edges, linings, etc. Now we could absolutely add a lining to this bag but the purpose behind the placemat projects are that they are super simple, ready to go. You don't have to add any extras. So I did not put a lining in this bag, but if you'd like to see a how to do a tote with a lining, I will link that in the description below the video and you could absolutely do this one with a lining. But I think this turned out really great. It's got this faux leather bottom and faux leather handles and it makes it really versatile, really strong, and it'll be a great tote bag all around. It could be a purse. You could adjust the size, make it a purse, a tote, a book bag, a shopping bag, anything you want, and I hope you guys are going to enjoy it. So without further ado, I will slip over to the tutorial, and again, if you haven't seen versions one through nine, I'll have the playlist from my YouTube channel linked in the description below the video, as well as all the products I'm going to use. So here we go. Okay, so here's what you need. I'm using a faux leather. This has a finished side on the back that's going to make it pretty simple to use. You're going to need two pieces of that cut to 7 inches by 14 inches. You're going to need two pieces for your handle. I cut mine to 2 inches wide by 20 inches long. You can use whatever length you want. If you want yours longer or shorter, feel free to change that. I'm using a swivel lobster clasp and a half inch by 2 inch um, a scrap piece of the faux leather and that's just going to create a place where I can hang my keys inside my purse if I want. Um, that's totally optional. You don't have to. You can put it on the outside or the inside of the bag, whatever you want. And then I'm using the standard Pioneer Woman placemat. If you're new to the placemat pouches that I have on this channel, these are Pioneer Woman placemats. You can get them at Walmart um, for three dollars and some change usually. And this is the quilted one. I've cut it in half, right in half, so cut it in half lengthwise. And then I used my serger and surged along the raw edge. If you don't have a serger, use a close uh, zigzag stitch just to secure those raw edges to keep them from fraying. So the first thing we're going to do is prepare our handles. And to do that, all I did was take my two by 20 inch piece, fold it in half, and clip it. And I don't recommend using pens on the faux leather because the holes will stay in there. So the clips work the best. I have all of the products that I could find listed in the description below the video. You also might want a fabric pen and a ruler. I'm using this inch and a half template, but you just need to be able to measure about an inch and a half so you can use a square quilting ruler or a straight ruler, whatever works for you. You can just cut a piece of cardstock or cardboard, inch and a half square. I have been thinking about putting these in my Etsy shop because they are pretty handy. All right, so once you have both of your handles clipped into place, take it over to your sewing machine and sew right along the open edge and then just make a matching seam on the opposite side on both of your handles. You can use a leather needle that will make it easier. If not, um, I've been using an 8012 universal needle and it's been working just fine. And I'll probably use a 3.0 stitch length uh, to do the stitching on the handles and probably for the rest of the bag. So go ahead and stitch your handles. All right, once you have your handle stitched, they should look something like this. Next, we are going to add the handle to the tops of our bags. So we're going to flip them over so that the finished edge is right here. And we're going to take the handle and place it on these particular placemats. You can actually use the guide right here from the first and the last square. I'm just going to line the handle up about like this and I'm gonna go an inch and a half down. And I'm 
right inside that square. So an inch and a half down. And I'm going to clip that into place. Same thing on this one. I'm going to go just inside that square. Make sure that it's straight, not twisted. I'm going to go an inch and a half down. Clip that into place. We're going to do the second one the same exact way, placing it right outside. I'm placing it right outside that decorative edge, so right on the edge of this square, inch and a half down. Make sure it's not twisted. An inch and a half down. Okay, so now you want to take it over to the sewing machine and you're going to sew a square. And if I, what I would recommend is going up about one inch. So about a one inch square, you're going to sew right over the bottom, over, up, and across, and then sew an X right in the middle. So you're gonna do that on all four handles. Okay, so it should be looking like this. I don't know if you can see my stitching, but I just squared, sewed a square and then an X through the square. And that's just going to secure those handles down. Now you're going to turn this over, take a piece of your faux leather, flip it over, and we're going to clip that into place. Make sure your handles are out of the way. Repeat it for the second one. You're putting pretty sides together. You're going to take those over to your sewing machine and you're going to stitch right along that, those raw edges. Okay, so it should be looking like this. You're going to open this up, turn it over, and you're going to push the, so the leather is laying flat and your seam is pushed up towards the top. And then you're going to take it over to your sewing machine and you're going to top stitch right along this edge, making sure that you're catching that seam. I've already done this one, so you can see what I'm talking about. I've top stitched right along here and that secured this edge down so that the leather is laying flat. So go ahead and do that to both of your pieces. Okay, once you have both of your pieces, top stitched and uh, sewn together the leather. It's time to add your D-ring. You can decide whether you want to put it on the inside or the outside of the bag. If you want to put it on the inside, you're going to flip it over and obviously tack it down right here on the inside. If you want to put it on the outside, you're going to put it on the outside. So I am going to put mine, let's see, right about, I think I'll do center of this first square or so. So about right there. So you can go ahead and tack that down. What you're going to do is match up your seams right here where these two come together. You want to make sure those line up. You're going to clip that into place. Same thing on the other side. Put that into place. Then straighten up the tops. Make sure everything is lining up.
right, so now you're gonna take it over to the sewing machine and you're going to use a quarter inch or so seam allowance. I like to go right along this edge that's already there, that seam that's holding that binding on. I like to go right along that edge and we're just going to stitch all the way down, across, and all the way back up. So all the way down, across, and all the way back up. Make sure you back stitch at the beginning and the end. Okay, so I went ahead and sewed mine all together. I've got all three sides sewn. And I placed the little D-ring. I decided to place it so it's going to be visible on the outside. So all I did was fold it in half so that the ends were sticking out like this and stick it right in the middle before I sewed it shut. All right, so now all that's left is to box our corners. So we are going to use our inch and a half template again and a fabric marker. If you don't have a fabric marker, you can use a regular pen, whatever works for you. Um, so you're going to measure an inch and a half from your seam line. So here's my seam. It's kind of hard to see since it's white. But you're going to measure an inch and a half over from the seam line. The seam line's right here and right here. So I'm going to measure inch and a half up an inch and a half from the bottom and make a mark. Same thing on this side. Measuring from the seam line on the side, inch and a half up and over. And again, if you don't have a, a square template, you can just measure it with a ruler, inch and a half over and an inch and a half up. All right, once you have that done, need to grab some scissors and we're just going to cut that out. You want to be pretty precise. Try not to overshoot. probably know the drill by now. We're going to open up that corner, place it inside, going to spread it out, and actually my seam's coming undone a little bit. So <clears throat> I'm going to run over and stitch this back closed a little bit and back stitch on the ends. So you might need to as well with the leather. Um, it's kind of rebelling a little bit. Okay, so I just reinforced those edges right at the end so that they don't come undone before I get the corners back. So we're going to reach inside. We're going to press the side seam with the bottom seam. And you can do two things. You can either open these up and try to sew it like that, or you can push one to the left and one to the right. It's called nesting. Nest those seams together and clip. Make sure everything's straight. Same thing on this side, open it up. If you're nesting them, make sure you push this the same way all the way across the bottom. So that one's gonna go to my left. There we go. Make sure everything's nice and flat. All right, so now you're just going to stitch with a quarter inch seam allowance along that edge and this edge, and then you can zigzag the end if you want. This isn't going to fray, but if you want a more finished edge on there, you can absolutely zigzag it if you want. All right, so we've got our corners boxed. I didn't zigzag mine, I'm fine with it, the raw leather edges, but that's again, up to you. And now all that's left is to turn this right side out. Have to kind of finger press those corners to make it nice and boxy. And there you have it. 
Now, if you want, you can add an optional cam snap right here. I think I will. So let's go ahead and do that. All right. If you guys have been with me very long, you have probably done the cam snaps, but I will go ahead and show you again how it's done. All right. I'm going to go right in the middle here, I'm trying to center this on my mat. about right there. I'm going to go about one inch down and I am going to go ahead and press all the way through with my poke tool. And then I'm going to take one of my cam snaps with the tack side and push that through. There's two separate bottoms to a cam snap. There's a male and a female end doesn't matter which one you use. I'm just going to put one of those backs on the back. You can use either one. Just make sure you have one of each for your snap. You're going to take your pliers and squeeze. We have the first one done. Let's see if we can find that hole on the second side. There it is. Put our tack through the outside. Put the opposite end on. Take our pliers, you put on the black side, you put on the bottom of the tack side. And squeeze. And there we go. So I hope you guys are enjoying this version number 10 called the tote of the placemat pouches. Again, I'll have the entire 1 through 10 now playlist linked in the description below the video as well as all the products used. Thanks so much for watching and if you guys make these as always please tag me on social media. I'm on Instagram, Facebook, you can put it on my Facebook page in my Facebook group called Craft Crazy. Uh, tag me on Instagram, it's at Lori Nunamaker with an underscore between Lori and Nunamaker. And until next time, never stop making. See you guys. Bye bye.